Well, you guys, it is a couple days later and it is time for Alexis to shine. This is gonna be her first ever tire change, let alone tubeless install. <laughs> I've been standing out here in the shop for a few days. I haven't moved since that last clip. Thankfully though, we have some comfortable footwear thanks to today's sponsor. Boom, shout out to Brunt. So over the past year or so, I've seen Brunt all over Facebook and they're making it a mission to offer the most quality boot for the money. And from what I've heard, they did exactly that. First look at the boots overall, really nice quality. I love the way the leather feels. It's nice, it's supple. There shouldn't be too much of a break in with the materials that they use. They have like a cool multi-layered insole. So if you want a little bit more height, cushion, you have that option. Nice mesh liner for breathability. The welt is adhesive, but I haven't heard of any delamination issues. Other than good looks, this boot is functional. It is completely waterproof right out of the box. For the money, this is a great option for workwear. They also have safety toe boots. These are on safety toe. Me personally, I don't work in a trade, so I don't need that. Never been a huge fan of steel toes, but I am actually going to be giving these away to one of you guys. So drop it down in the comments if you need a pair of boots and you are a size 13. I have way too many boots and shoes as it is, so I figured somebody else could get better use than me. But if you are interested in purchasing a pair of these boots, use my code ADVDAILY10 to save $10 on your order. Let's get back to the tubeless install. All right, so. We were going to reinstall this, but realized that my bike is even more clapped than we realized. <laughs> and I need wheel bearings and brake pads. So hopefully we'll get those ordered today. Shout out to Rocky Mountain. Shipping usually is like sometimes two days. And we are gonna reinstall this just to take it right back off. So this has been sitting for a few days now and it's holding air great. So we nailed the first tubeless install ever. Pretty happy about that. Didn't mar up the rim that much. And overall, it was fairly easy other than that last few bites that we took. I think we're gonna have a better go at it the second time around, but this is completely up to her. We also need a chain though. But like she said, this thing is completely clapped. We're gonna have to strap that rear end down to get this front tire off. So let's go ahead and do that. Should we do another sp sponsor? <laughs> All right. like this valve stem was really close to being ripped off the tube. This is pinched in there actually. A little bent carrot. <laughs> I hate that smell. <laughs> I'm nervous. Okay. What's next? My spoon. I'm gonna DB the tire. Boom. <laughs> Terminology on point. Oh God. This way. There we go. Times two. <laughs> oh, this sucks. I'm gonna lose a knuckle. Intense. <laughs> it is quite intense. Oh, sweatshirt gonna have to go. Woo, the old dickies. <laughs> Woo. We have the bead buddy to help keep the opposing bead in the drop center. But when you insert the following spoon, you gotta back off on your last one a little bit to create some more room. Would be really handy if you were ambidextrous. <laughs> and if you are struggling this much, you can lube it a little bit. Normally, with a tire this size, it's not that much of a struggle, and I just don't like getting messy. So you can try lube if you think that'll help. Lube. <laughs> oh, you like it dry, do you? Okay. I can hear the comments now. You made this poor girl struggle. What's the benefit in trying to learn how to try a tire? <laughs> Equality is real, guys, in this day and age. This is the only part I have a sh like trouble. What part? You have never done this. You don't know that other parts are gonna be struggling? <laughs> no, I just mean like, I feel like once you told me to like hold onto this, I was able to lift it over. Right. Getting it like in. Well, you're too far. So go right there and then push down and push in. <laughs> and 
and it'll be smooth sailing for now. Now you got the majority over there. Look how little of the sidewall is showing. This is pushed all the way down in the drop center, so you're gonna be super loose now. Money. There, you kind of got the technique yeah. now. It's easier. I was like trying to go in like this. Yeah. So when you're going like this, you push it down. And kind of go it in an angle, just like that. That was it. And we are not saving this tube, so you can be rough with it. Bead Buddy, it's time to go. We don't need her anymore. Thanks, buddy. Woo! Side one is done. Oof. Zero help for me. Good job. Thanks. Now this side's gonna be a lot easier, but I would also just use the Bead Buddy to start. Tube's pretty chafed. Pretty clapped. I need some baby powder for that. No, it needs a burn pit. Woo! EPA. All right, cleaning time. And guys, we're gonna reuse the rest of the rim tape that we had from the last install. I don't know how much we'll get out of it. We did three full wraps like you're supposed to. That'd be cool if we got an extra wrap out of this, but it's cool they do give you excess. recommends oh. front rim tape is actually a little bit skinnier I kind of wish they would just give you the same in the rear so you could just do three full wraps and be done some wheels are wider though so I think that's why they do it make it a little bit easy. All right, this goes in here. Rim lock down. Holy cow. Oh, she's in. Time for the spoonies. Got it. Job. Sweat bullets. Mm. Keep doing it. You had it. Sick. Nice. Now that was the easy side. I'm already done. Yeah. About. Why don't you hold that up? 
Shout out to Murphy's. Murphy's. I will have that link down in the description. Guys, I bought this bucket like three, four years ago. Haven't even put a dent in it. Eight pounds of lube. And you can buy that on Amazon. So I'll put a link down below. It's been really good. Wash skin thoroughly after handling. Oh, skin irritation. Ooh, I put it on my pecker. Guys, that's a problem I had with the first one, is with that bladder, it's hard to get the opposing bead down into the drop center. So just try with the bead buddy. And I think the front will be a little bit stretchier and less difficult, but that is the uh, the biggest problem that I've seen with this system. So drop it down in the comments below if you figured out. Obviously a Rabaconda would help that, but for somebody who's just using some basic levers, drop it down in the comments, leave some tips. I'll take a real flexible here. <laughs> You don't like really need three arms to do this. <laughs> definitely helps to have a second person try that. If you're flexible, I guess it works. It was an interesting technique, but I think it might work. Good luck for some of you dudes out there in the old geriatrics with replaced hips. I don't know. Dude. And you always want to try to finish directly opposite of your bead buddy. Okay, so maybe I'll come over here. Hold on, switching legs. Oop, she got her slit in there, I think. This is the make it or break it because you can really easily damage the bead here. Keep going. Watch that bead. Dude, you're close. Home stretch. Literally the tightest jeans I could possibly wear. Somebody sponsor some shop pants. You're gonna have to go in the middle there because that has the most clearance. Like you're never gonna be able to get a spoon in one of those ends. So you're gonna have to pry up with your hand and then get that spoon pushed in there. My hands are getting sweaty. I can't. I need to break. My whole leg is numb. <laughs> so you could come back over here and try to pry it down on this bead, but you're going to lose your progress. We don't have enough spoons for that. The bead buddy is in there, but once again, guys, that bladder in there just prevents you from getting that down any further. Oh, oh my gosh, guys. Now you can try to push on that one and that one and get that last little bit, but don't let them pop out. Ooh, you want a hammer? No. Oh my God. Go down. It went down. Oh. <sighs> wow. I will give you credit for that 100%. Thanks. 100%. It pays to be short and flexible. Okay, flexible, yes. I don't know why short helps, but good job, dude. Good job. I'm really impressed, actually. Alexis did this full front wheel assembly all by herself. Good job. I guess it would have helped to have even a couple more spoons and a two set of hands, because I could have stood over here and pried this supposing bead down in there, because the bead buddy just didn't seem to be doing a whole lot because of that bladder. That's interesting, though, guys. Let me know your thoughts. Overall, tubeless was definitely a harder install than the Lucioli. We got her done. Now it's time to fill her up. What you really should do, guys, is pry down here with a lever to get some soapy water in there. It will affect it, though, if you use a tire sealant. Like if you want to put like uh, any kind of stop leak in there, tire slime, any of the other kind of components, the soap will break that down. So you can also use Armor All. Or what I should have done is taken some of the Murphys and then lubed the inner bead because that's what sits against the bladder. All right, moment of truth. High pressure to 120. So go till it stops. Do, 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 do. Got a big air bubble down there. That's questionable. Stop it! Yeah, me nervous. Ooh, I like to see that. I see lots of good bubbles. Good bubbles because they stopped. So this compressor can fill about 90 psi, and we'll do the rest with the bike pump. Pump, pump. Oh, that was a workout too. I hear leaky leaky. Guess what? What? It's from the stem. No. I bet it ripped. No. Well guys, we did end up having some issues unfortunately. She did a fantastic install overall. And we're kind of stumped on to what's going on. We had thought we had punctured the inner bladder at first, this high pressure chamber, 
but we did not. We just took the entire thing apart. I just wanted to show you guys a little bit on how this works, so come in here tighter. So the seal that's created is in between the bladder and the bead of the tire. So the bead of your tire sits in here, and when you inflate this, that bladder pushes out on the bead creating the seal. So the spoke holes and all of that are completely irrelevant. That's not what's creating the seal. It is just this high pressure bladder against the inner bead of the tire. So I think we're gonna do a better job of lubing this and lubing that inner bead to get it to seat because that's the issue that we were having. But thankfully nothing's damaged. And this right here is your low pressure chamber. It just completely passes through the rim lock here. But yeah, we're gonna give this another shot off camera. Whew. Well, you guys, that wraps up the tubeless install. So I went back around and we did it another time. It actually went a lot smoother the second time. I think I got the bead buddy to sit in the opposing bead a little bit better. So a little bit of lube in the end to get that final bead over and it popped right on. I mean, honestly, that took probably less than 10 minutes yeah. for me to do that that yeah. second time. So not as bad as the first time. Obviously you're gonna get better every single time. What do I think about the tubeless having a little bit more experience with changing tires and running different things? It's definitely more involved. I think there's more, I don't wanna say failure points. Yeah, I mean, more, more failure points, more things to go wrong to a traditional tube. But when you do get it right, you have a lot of benefits, being able to plug the tire, being able to run super, super low tire pressures next to nothing with peace of mind. So it's just one of those things that you gotta get it right the first time to get it to work and last. But I'm just curious to hear from you guys and girls out there, what are your experiences? How long does your bike hold air for? Who knows, a lot of people say use liberal amounts of soapy water when you're setting this bead, you know, right before you air it up. We did that the first time, big time. So much that we had like water in the tire. This time I was just heavy with the silicone spray. I don't have Armor All, I've never used it. I normally use that Murphy's Tire Compound and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I would also probably try in the future to lube that bladder up with that Murphy's and that inner bead before we install it. I don't see anything wrong with that. I mean, it's meant for tubeless applications. That stuff is kind of like a dry lube, so it would kind of just disappear over time. Other than that, you did a really good job with Thanks. the install. Yep, I, I was impressed. It. It's an art, man. It's a skill. It's one of those things where you just have to do and you get better. Yeah. Obviously, I think you've had a lot of experience watching, mm -hmm. so you had a decent idea of how to do it. Yeah. So what do you think the most difficult part is? I guess it would be, yeah, like trying to hold when you need more than just two. Using right. my leg, like, is not a foolproof right. answer for it, so. It would be nice to have an extra set of hands. Yeah, You know, absolutely. like, when we were putting it back together, I'd be like, hey, hold the spoon. And she'd hold it for me, and I could just fly through it. And, like, we were cruising. So if you have an extra set of hands, you know, don't be afraid to ask for help. It does help. So three to four spoons, obviously, are... Yep, I would recommend. And honestly, those levers, I don't want to say aren't the best, because I've never had an issue with them. I know a lot of people though use the spoon style, like the actual spoon shaped levers. I've tried the spoons, most of the ones I just feel are too big. I like how small those are. I can wiggle them in places. I know the spoons are a little bit thinner though, so maybe I'll give them a shot again. I don't know. What do you guys use? I know some people use freaking flatheads, so. Oh, Other than that guys, I definitely feel more confident in my Lucioli setup. I have a little bit more peace of mind knowing that it was done right and other than the low, low, low risk of me getting a puncture, I have a lot of confidence in the Lucioli. This, not so much as far as holding air. There's not gonna be any issue with, with or, riding yeah. and, and to me it just seems like a little bit more to look after. I know there's Definitely. gonna be a lot of people that have done this a million times and have got it down to a science and dialed in. I, I don't have that experience yet. So to be determined how well this does, how much maintenance is involved, how much we have to fill this. Is the high pressure chamber gonna last a week? Or are we gonna have to fill it every ride? Uh, it'd be kind of a bummer if you had to fill it every ride. I would probably go to the Lucioli at that point because I already put this back together twice using two different methods. I'd really rather not have to do it a third time, but I, I think this one's dialed. So we'll just see what happens with the rear and go from there. But I think I'm blabbering on a little bit much. Um, once again, I'll have all the links down in the description. Thank you to Brunt again. Leave a comment if you're a size 13 and you really need a pair of work boots, I will get you set up. Anything else you wanna wrap up? I don't think so. We need to get some tire plugs for both of them. Yeah, that's true. That's something I don't have to take with the Lucioli. So we'll see, we'll see in the desert, there's gonna be a 
lot of cacti and pokey things that will really test the system out and I'm curious to see how it holds up. Yours and mine. Thanks for watching guys. Always remember to live free, adventure daily, and yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Peace!